House of the Dragon, Episode 8, The Lord of Tides. Oh boy, time for another time jump. This time six years. And whoa, what the hell did they do to these children? Fire the casting director immediately. Anyway, Lord Corliss suffers a mortal wound in battle, and now his lands are up for grabs. Once again, his wife, the queen that never was, has to give up her seat to someone else, a man. Either her husband's brother or the bastard children of her son's wife. Her brother-in-law is adamant he will be the new lord of Driftmark as he won't let his bloodline die since his nephew had no true-born children. He will take it to the king, er, I mean, the queen? See, the king is not doing well, and I can't believe he's still alive. But now the queen and her father rule the Red Keep. She sits in place of her husband, and her father is hand of the king. Together, they are unstoppable in the Red Keep. This petition by Vaemon Valerian might just be the thing they can use to supplant Rhaenyra with Alicent's firstborn son. If the king's hand, her father, were to rule in favor of Corliss's brother, it would essentially be a confirmation from the king that Rhaenyra's children are not of Valyrian blood. Therefore, she would have no legitimate heirs to the throne when she takes it. Now, Alicent's eldest son is not a good dude and would be a terrible king. Alicent is constantly bailing him out of trouble as he rapes his way through the castle and abuses his sister wife. She finds solace in the fact that at least her son is a true-born male heir and the realm will be more at ease because of it. However, the king has something to say about that. For too long he has laid in bed while his wife and father-in-law rule his kingdom. And he has already made a ruling on this matter 20 years ago. So how dare everyone try and change his will? He will make a grand entrance hobbling towards his throne and boy does this guy look dreadful. How is he still alive? And none other than his brother Damon helps him take his rightful seat. They are finally brothers once again. The king asks his aunt what the wishes of her husband were. Despite wanting it for herself, she explains it is clear he intended it to pass to his son, Rhaenyra's first husband, and then his grandson. And since the king will not recognize these children as bastards, they are to inherit the, the Lord of Driftmark. Vaemon Valerian will not stand for it, and he says that forbidden word, Rhaenyra's children are bastards. And for that, Damon kills him, and the king does nothing. See, he just wants to have a good old-fashioned family dinner one last time. And King Viserys ends as he began, a sympathetic doofus king with one of his rare moments of good kingship. This dinner might just be the thing this family needs to come together as one. He makes a toast at this dinner and explains that the problems that this family has is that everyone is seeking power and the Iron Throne. But really, they should unite as one family. It would be one of the strongest ruling families the realm has ever seen. And he asks them to do it not just for the sake of the realm, but for the sake of himself, for he loves everyone here at this table and he wishes they could feel the same way about each other. All he wanted was a big happy family and in the end, he seems to get it. Rhaenyra and Alicent start making amends, each toasting how they are regretful and sorrowful about how they've acted over these many years. However, after the king goes to bed, it isn't long before his grandchildren, <clears throat> cough, cough, Allison's children, are back to squabbling. And the only people to blame are their parents. Allison, for all her talk of duty and honor, has been a terrible mother. And her children may be true born, but are abominations. Rhaenyra has gone the opposite direction. With her free spirit, her kids are just simply not strong enough to lead. Out of everyone here, I wonder if the daughters would do better, but we don't get to hear much from them.
The second last scene is confusing. Who are these people? I don't even know what's going on. And the last scene is confounding, basically undoes everything this show has been trying to build. Alicent hears King Viserys muttering as he mistakes Alicent for Rhaenyra. And in this muttering, Alicent believes she hears him say that he wants his third son to be heir. That being Alicent's second son with the king. And upon hearing this, Alicent decides, yep, this makes sense, and rushes out of the room. Such an odd thing to take from that conversation. The acting in this episode stinks. Daddy Patty is the only one doing anything. Everyone else is just standing around. But now I want to know what you think. Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to The Flick Fixers.